All right, uh, so for all of you Oregon Coast fans that uh, are tired of seeing uh, my goofy mug all the time in these videos, this video is for you. This is going to be strictly just driving and drone footage, uh, driving uh, to town, past town, and then through old town, so you can kind of get a feel for what the town looks like uh, on the road. And then I'm going to show you a bunch of drone footage as well, so you can really kind of get a lay of the land, uh, including uh, Silk Coast Lake, um, the dunes, uh, old town, so you can kind of get a feel for all of uh, Florence and uh, some of the surrounding areas. All that starts now. back on the road here so we are on highway 101 just south of Florence so maybe just uh, about five minutes or so uh, outside of Florence uh, I'll drive you all the way into Florence but before we do we'll make a few stops on the way uh, we've got Silk Coast Lake on the right coming up and then Honeyman State Park on the left I'm going to show you both of those areas uh, with some drone footage now one way you know you're getting close to Florence if you kind of see off to the left and to the right here and there you're gonna see a lot of ATV rentals a lot of dune buggy rentals uh, sandboarding rentals you know tours all things sand so that's how you really know that uh, you're getting close to Florence you're gonna see a lot of those around town Florence has uh, just under 10,000 people it's uh, largely a retirement town at least a third of the population here is retired um, and you've got a lot of people coming from Portland and Eugene, you know, people coming from the valley uh, specifically for the dunes. So you've got the recreation that's attracting a lot of people, and then you've got this uh, retiree population. So you kind of got this two mix, uh, this these two uh, de demographics that really kind of make up a lot of Florence. And before we get into town here, I'm going to take you over to Silcoose Lake. Silcoose Lake, uh, I believe, is the largest lake. Uh, along the Oregon coast, probably by quite a big margin. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's massive. Probably the next largest lake is going to be uh, Devil's Lake uh, up in Lincoln City. So you've got uh, you've got some homes around the lake. So if you want to be uh, by the lake or even on the lake, um, this is a great place to be. You can kind of start to see the dunes uh, there in the background and we'll go over that direction over to the other side of 101. We're on the east side of 101 right now. We'll go over to the west side of 101 where the dunes are in just a moment here. One thing you can kind of see uh, up in the corner here of the lake is uh, Darlene's. Darlene's is a great spot to, uh, to grab a bite to eat and uh, they have a boat ramp down there. So if you need to put in somewhere, that's uh, Probably going to be your closest place to put in on the lake uh, from this location here. I haven't fished it, but uh, I understand uh, the fishing here is uh, pretty good. The lake itself is pretty shallow. Uh, somewhere around 80% of the lake is uh, less than 15 uh, feet deep. So one thing uh, kind of making the lake unique. And as we pan uh, to the north, you, we're now getting towards uh, Florence. You can kind of see in the background. And now this is uh, the other side of 101, the west side. Uh, this is Honeyman State Park. Great place to uh, just hang out. Uh, there's some picnic tables, go for a swim. You can see people up here on the dunes. Uh, looks like you got a, a few people that are uh, sand surfing. You see that guy down there in the right hand corner right there. So you can just start to get an idea of how expansive these dunes are and why so many people come to the Oregon coast, uh, you know, to do all things sand. Th this is about as good at dunes as you're going to get really kind of anywhere in the United States. And uh, if you didn't know, uh, the book Dune and the movie Dune uh, was inspired by uh, some time that the author spent here while in Florence. So he was in uh, such awe of these dunes that uh, inspired him to, uh, to write a book about it. So this is what's going to drive a lot of the economy is uh, recreation 
Uh, Florence is largely uh, driven by tourism. Other than tourism, Florence's economy is really driven by uh, logging, commercial fishing, and uh, agriculture. So Florence is uh, sort of known as um, the playground of the Oregon coast, uh, Oregon's coastal playground. You know, so you can kind of see um, why that is with all the recreation opportunities here. And so that is a huge draw for people coming this way. It's probably um, one of the best spots along the Oregon coast for the outdoorsman. So if you like fishing or hunting, you probably won't find a, a better spot. It's got great crabbing as well. You can crab right off the, uh, the dock um, or docks of the uh, Sayusla River. The beaches tend to be pretty uncrowded. You know, some of the better beaches uh, along the Oregon coast, like, you know, I'm thinking of a Cannon Beach, for example, is always packed. There's tons of people there. Um, you know, which is fine, you know, it's a great beach, but um, if you like something a little less crowded, uh, you're going to find some less crowded beaches in Florence for sure. So now we're headed, uh, we're back out on 101 here, just coming into town, going over the bridge of the Seosla River. You've got Old Town, which is the downtown on the right hand side here, and I'll take you down there in just a moment. I'll take you through uh, Old Town so you can kind of see what it looks like down there. Lots of shops. Uh, galleries kind of feel the uh, historic old town district the town itself kind of feels to me like a smaller town it doesn't feel like um, like a Coos Bay or an Astoria or maybe some of the bigger towns along the Oregon coast although it is really a bigger town having near 10,000 people makes it a bigger town along the Oregon coast along a lot of Oregon coastal towns will have just a couple thousand people so uh, just under 10,000 people is a, a rather large town, but it's still kind of got a small town feel to it, but still with a fair amount of energy, There's still a fair amount of things going on, um, whether it's local events or people coming from Portland or Eugene, you know, for all the recreation, there's still a fair, fair amount of energy in this town, you know, kind of being leaning more towards, uh, despite leaning more towards uh, a retirement town. Now, after we go through uh, downtown Old Town here, uh, I'm going to take you up in the air so you can kind of get a feel for uh, what the town looks like from the air. On the left of us, uh, you've got a nice river walk, um, quite a few places to sit outside, uh, whether you're grabbing a, a coffee or a bite to eat. Uh, so you can kind of walk along the river, find somewhere to sit down, hang out. It's really a nice, really charming place. Seems like people often ask uh, if it's windy there. Seems like that's a common question, you know, for whatever reason. And, and yes, it, it can definitely be windy in Florence. That's how you get those massive sand dunes is a fair amount of wind uh, building those up. It's not windy everywhere. You know, if you're right along the Oregon coast, if you're oceanfront, yeah, you're going to run into some wind for sure. But uh, if you're inland a little bit uh, or over by like a, you know, the Silk Coast Lake, eh, it's, it's probably not a whole lot windier there than anywhere else along the Oregon coast. All right, so up in the air now, um, starting uh, on the east side of the river. So we're on the east side of the bridge, kind of where we started driving uh, through Old Town here, giving you an aerial view of, uh, of the river. You can see some of these docks uh, down below. Uh, I mentioned uh, you can find a few places uh, off the docks where you can go crabbing. That large parking lot you can kind of see right there, that's back where we kind of started uh, driving through Old Town, just to give you a little bit more of a point of reference. If you're wondering about uh, the housing market in Florence right now, there's about 60 uh, homes on the market right now as I'm shooting this. We're pretty close to midsummer, so that's kind of about the peak for uh, when you see listings. Usually throughout July, you're going to see the number of listings kind of peak. Uh, maybe towards the end of July, and then kind of start to taper off August and uh, September. So 60 homes in the market, that's in um, Florence Incorporated. If we look kind of north of that to like a Cedar Beach, or we go down to like uh, Dune City or Silk Coos, you're going to find closer to about uh, 100 homes uh, currently on the market. Average values are uh, about closer to like 425, maybe getting up to like 430 or something like that which is, is pretty low along the Oregon coast. Uh, your dollar does tend to go a little bit farther uh, in Florence than it does maybe in some of the other towns. A lot of towns are probably um, along the Oregon coast, your average is probably gonna be closer to 500 and probably doesn't get you quite as much. So 
Um, this is uh, on the 101 that we were driving on earlier, so kind of looking up north and then kind of just panning back east up the uh, Sayuslaw River. Kind of give you a feel, there's that old town just below. And then looking back south, there's the bridge we initially came across. And then those dunes, just beyond those dunes is uh, Honeyman State Park that we were at uh, just a moment ago. And then uh, you've got uh, the ocean right there too. So you're gonna find some homes uh, that are oceanfront, have an oceanfront view, some that have a view of the river and the ocean, but, but not too many. You're gonna see a lot of those dunes out there. You can kind of see those dunes uh, just on the uh, west side of the river there, up above towards the top of the picture. A lot of those dunes are gonna obstruct uh, views, but uh, you can find some uh, homes with a, a coastal view. Uh, you know, a lot of people are looking for that, uh, that ocean view that are moving along the Oregon coast. All right, so we're gonna pick up where we left off here, just across the bridge. So heading north on 101, uh, I'll take you through the northern part of the town. Maybe a few last things to mention. If you've never been here before, uh, one of the bigger attractions here is the uh, the Sea Lion Caves, which is just to the north. I believe they're the largest sea lion caves uh, in North America, so those attract quite a few people. That's something that you maybe check out once, and uh, you know, once you've seen it, uh, that that's probably enough. But uh, it's yeah, if you haven't seen it before, you you might want to check it out, especially if you have kids, it might be fun for them. Another famous thing uh, Florence is sort of known for it was the uh, the exploding whale. Back in the 70s, there was a very large whale um, that was beached, and uh, they didn't have any way to, to get rid of it, so um, they ended up uh, using dynamite to blow it up, you know, and kind of maybe not considering some of the consequences of blowing up, you know, a whale that weighs, I don't know how many tons, you know, dozens and dozens of tons, so what, you know, inevitably ended up happening is uh, you've got all this whale blubber you know flying up in the air and then landing down on people so it's uh, they actually named there's a park um, that they named uh, called the exploding whale memorial park um, after that event so if you stumble across that park or looking on a map and you see that park and wonder why the funny name uh, that's kind of the backstory all right, well, I'm going to leave you now uh, to drive through if you want to see the rest of what it looks like driving through Florence. Again, I know we get a lot of people kind of asking for more of the subject and uh, less of Paul and I. Uh, so that's that's what this video is intended to do. And that's what you'll kind of see um, maybe a little bit more of us from us going forward is uh, some more driving, some more drone video so you can really get a feel for what these towns look like along the Oregon coast. I know a lot of people like the driving video so you can kind of just, you can see some of the stores as you're driving through and really get a feel for like what it's like to be there. All right, well, I hope that helps you to get a better feel for how Florence is laid out, what the town's like. And if you have any questions about Florence or moving along the Oregon uh, coast, you can always give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link below to schedule a Zoom with us. No matter how you get in touch with us, we've got your back when it comes to moving to the Oregon coast. Take care, everyone.